most people think of plants as very passive, gentle creations that wouldn't hurt a fly. Well, in actual fact, there is a group of plants that are carnivorous, and they prey on insects, yes, flies, and they even prey on small creatures, such as frogs and newts. This is Dionia musipula, or the Venus's flytrap, one of a number of insectivorous plants, and because the ground they live in isn't very full of nutrients, they rely on passing insects and they trap them in those little traps. Now, Nikki's got a fly there. Now, if, you, if she puts it into the trap, you'll see, she tips it into there. Right, now it's not happening at the moment, because what we'll have to do is to just, no, just run the Kirby grip along the side of, of the plant, this side here. There's three little, three little filaments as if because that normally the fly would fly or walk around in there and if you knock the three little hairs inside inside there and run it along them like that then uh -huh. gradually it closes up you see because that was a dead fly because it wasn't moving around normally now that will now compress that fly and take all the life juices out of it and that would be the nutrients to feed the plant isn't that interesting thank you there we are the traps open again and uh, just the dead husk of the fly in there drained of all its nutrients yeah. so just like animals see some plants trap prey as well the other side here, and here they are, the Saracenias, look, insect-eating plants. Uh, aren't they absolutely beautiful? And you don't often see them in flower, but these are in flower, look. But you look how intricate they are, and the little unsuspecting insects come on the side to get at the nectar at the bottom, and it's slippery, so they slip right down, and they get digested <laughs> by the plants. Oh. Just like that. And there's a smaller one. Saracenia moriei, that one, and here is a drosera, which is some do, and with this, the insects think their nectar on the ends of those spikes, and actually it's very sticky and they can't get away, and then, like the Venus fly trap, they curl up and digest the poor, unsuspecting little plant, and there's an even smaller Saracenia. I mean these, you could actually grow them in a bug garden in your own garden, these. And uh, we intend to do that one of these days, I haven't got around to it yet. And here, back to the sundew, we see a fly trapped in the sundew, attracted by the sticky bits which it thinks is nectar. And the sundew just wraps itself around it and it cannot escape and it, and it can digest the juices from it. Simple as that. Another variation on this is the butterwort pinguicula, which has smooth sticky leaves and the flies just land on it and that's it, they get stuck there and it digests them from there. And finally on this piece about carnivorous plants we have the bladderwort, which actually lives in the water and the bladders or traps are beneath the water and catch water insects that happen to be swim past even tiddlers and very small fish this diagram shows you how they work well i hope that helped you to understand that plants aren't just things that grow in the ground in this section we showed you carnivorous plants and their struggle to survive in this world even to the extent of tracking animals like other animals track animals and animals eat plants uh, this is all part of the book this gardener and I'll be happy to share some more of it with you. Thank you very much.